morning y'all, it's early start because I've got to get to Torquay, we're doing more, well, I don't know what we're doing because the weather is absolutely shocking. It's been like a storm all night, it's raining and we've got 40 mile an hour gusts I think today, so lovely UK winter. Thanks for yesterday's answers to the question, obviously you're all going to work on very different things which is good, thanks also for the overwhelming support in yesterday's video, hopefully there's some points made there that kind of clear up my position and maybe how some are being blatantly, well, you decide. Right, let's go and get a coffee. Hello Talkie Golf Club, a windy Talkie Golf Club. Other coffee uh, companies are available. <laughs> right, so today's video is gonna be an in my bag, um, which is an interesting one because obviously my bag is now a sponsored bag. So just a little footnote now, if you're a little bit sensitive to this being in the video, just stop watching, because it's sponsored by them, my bag. So apart from one club, it's gonna be <laughs> But people are still asking me a lot to find out what's in my bag, so I guess we'll show you. I'm never a great fan of these videos as well, because again, you should be testing stuff for you. What's in my bag might not work for you, well equally it might, but hopefully I'll be able to show you through the year how this equipment helps me play to the standard I want to play at, or not. I mean, you'll watch, that's the beauty of my stuff, nothing's hidden, you just see it all. So yeah, in my golf bag, I guess. Right, should we start with some irons? So. The irons I'm going to be gaming this year, subject to any changes in my feels and performance if we see it, um, or any kind of injuries where I need some different launches, but I'm going to be gaming these. Titleist MB. So 718 Titleist MB. It's a natural progression from the Mizuno blades to this blade. Anyone who watches the reviews, I've always liked um, Titleist shape of blades. They're classic and beautiful. It is maybe one of the thinnest top limes you can get. And it'll be interesting to see if that makes any difference in my feels of consistency with gaming them. And then there's only one other interesting point with these actually. Because off the face, to be honest with you, they feel as good as anything that I've hit. Like lots of the blades do out there. So when we were fitting these, it was an amazing fitting up at Titleist. I didn't film it, I should have to be honest, because I've never, it, it was a fitting like I've never seen before, which was, we'll talk about that maybe in another video. Um, they got a little bit more offset than my uh, MP5s, and they were asking if, you know, if that offset is okay, and to be honest with you, I didn't really mind. I don't see it as much offset at all until they pointed it out, but they did mention that they could probably get rid of it, and I'm not sure it's something they can do for consumers so much, you'd have to ask your fitters. But when I film with Wiesberger, which I've probably pronounced wrong again, he had the offset taken out in his, so they crunch it in a vice basically and take it out. Um, and the reason the offset is in there is because they told me Adam Scott likes to see a bit of Adam, uh, a little bit of offset, which I thought was really interesting. So MB Ford 718s, pitch and wedge go down to before we go to the wedges, which we'll talk about. Um, and then my highest iron is a five iron, but I finally stepped it. So I'm CB in the five iron, and I do like the gentle cross over in that fraction more help. And even though, to be honest with you, I don't see, I think I'll see a massive difference in performance with my five iron. I was noticing a little bit more height. So it was blending into my, so obviously whatever hybrids I choose, which will still be called a Ringy Dinks, because basically that refers to the fact that it's a 23 more than the manufacturer, but we'll come to that end in a minute. Um, so yeah, so I've gone CB, little bit of cavity back in my longest iron, which is a five iron, to push a fraction more height out there to keep it in line with the hybrid lofts I use that kind of keep it up in the air. One other interesting point with these, before we come on to this actually, I'll tell, I've got dynamic golds, um, I don't even know what I've got in here actually because everyone knows I'm not really, I think it's just a standard stiff dynamic gold, shaft golf pride grip, no layers of tape on the grip as well. But look what I've done to my nine iron, when we were testing it, it was interesting, the nine iron just wasn't spinning at the normal number I get my nine iron spinning at. And to be honest with you, I've never really tested my nine iron that much, but I, I kind of knew where it was and I had my clubs with me and I showed them what my spin number was with my nine iron. And the spin was just a fraction low, I couldn't get the spin on the nine iron up in the 8000s, it was always down in the 7000s. 
Um, so what I've done is they wanted me to come home and test it. It was a cold day, you know, put it on the course and see if I notice a difference. And to be honest with you, on the course I don't really notice a difference, but I don't want to lose spin. So I've just put two layers of lead tape at the top of my nine iron here. That's just going to help raise the CG a little bit. I'm going to hit generally below that. A little bit of gearing hopefully will give it a fraction more spin. So I've actually custom fit this club myself as in I've redesigned the nine iron and it was a really interesting experiment because how many of you are trying each club in the bag to check that they all do what they should do obviously in a fitting often it's just one standard iron which is something I'm going to keep trying pushing for in my reviews to show people and manufacturers that they should be giving you more options but it'll be interesting as this club goes forward because the tight list of the agreement we've got is that they're interested in talking to me about club design and any ideas I've got and instantly off the bat that is one that I would like to talk through a little bit more with them that's my irons MB 718 tight list forged with a little bit of Mark Crossfield design on the nine iron Right, fun little live there, hopefully you saw it if you didn't check out the channel, just testing clubs off different parts of the face and how hard that is. Now time to get home. Should we talk driver next? Let's do the driver, shall we? Right, so the driver I'm going to be gaming this year, and it'll be interesting to see if it'll change because... So if you think of last year, my epic changed halfway through. So I do have this tussle between low spin and medium spins. Obviously, the low spin for me, I've got the launch characteristics that give me the most distance, but then they just the drop off can be quite big on them. I'm just gonna change the light in here a bit more. That's better. So we're starting the season off. Tightless 917 D2. D2, we get the channel, we get the changeable weight at the bottom, which I'm not using, that's just set up as standard. I'm in A1 setting in a 9.5 degree loss. Shaft of my own Fujikura. I'm a 63 S Flex Pro 63. Um, so it's a lighter shaft, which I just quite like the feel of. Again, same grip, Golf Pride. No extra layers of tape. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes in testing. It averages out at near my 262 and at my 262 and over it and just under it and at it, subject to what day I test and obviously the strikes. I'm not sure if D3... So I've got a thing which will test through the year. I, I kind of feel a little bit if I try to hit this and I don't hit this shot much where I'm trying to like drive like a 300 yard par four, you know, where you've got a bit of roll when we're in one of the warm countries and I go for my... I do this kind of 10 finger, almost step through swing. So I hit it like once every four rounds. When I do it with this club I don't get my longest numbers but when I'm trying to hit fairway with it it I, feels great I feel like I can do whatever shape so I get draws and fades how I want to I would say it's a little less draw bias than what my epic standard was where the epic sub was a bit fady so I'm, I'm loving how I feel in my direction with this club so obviously that's not the club that's my feels I'm just going to be interested to see if I test this compared to d3 when I want to do that step through if I need it does this give me the numbers and that's why I'm going to keep testing it but tight list d2 917 Always like look at these, feel is great. It'll be interesting to see if I hit fairways with this because obviously I had a decent year last year with Sub Zero where I was happy with how it went fairway wise. I can't see anything being any different with this one, but. You watch me play, so I don't really play much, hardly at all in a year, maybe 27 holes outside of what you watch. So you will see if this one works for me or not. That's what I'm going for. Wedges going into next year, then SM7 I'm using. I've got a 60 degree, a 50 degree, and a 56 degree. So I've got OA in the 50 F grind. Uh, in the 56 on an M grind in the 08 bounce and then in the 60 I'm an M grind in again 08 bounce So as you can see from those three, the 50 is much better than the other two by that account. So SM7, you've got the kind of variable, um, kind of these pads on the back look where they're moving center gravities that kind of sink in with other clubs, they say. To be honest with you, I just quite like the shape. I gamed, must have been an SM5, I reckon, in 60 for quite a long time on the vlogs, which you'll go back and see. I think sometimes people forget what I've gamed over the years, because I did actually have Vokies before I then went to Clevedon and had one Callaway wedge. But interesting having a set all the same, that's something I've never done in the past, see how that works for me. And I'm pretty set up with bounces, I manipulate the club 
to try and do whatever I'm trying to do, which is often just duff it anyway. But there you go, SM7s in the back. Shall we have a look at the putter? So anyone who's watched my course vlogs of late, my putting, kind of this season really, has not been that inspirational. I wouldn't say it's been bad, but it's not where I need it to be because for me, my putting is normally, if you think about the rounds of people I play with, a strokes gained. I'm gaining on them on the putting green, where I'm not gaining on them in distance. And I in play, I wouldn't say I'm gaining on Matt. If anything, he gains on me. His irons are a bit more better than the subject that I play. But I, I'd say they're a bit better as a rule. But then I game a lot on the green. And when I lose that advantage, as you can see in a few of the videos this year, certain Iceland was a great example of what I putted hopeless. It levels it, it really levels out the match because my gaining stat falls back to a non-gaining stat so he hits a few good irons and keeps it in play I'm driving with, I'm gaining with accuracy but not on distance, you see what I mean, I, then I don't win. So I'm going to have a go and I'm not sure, I'm not going to probably stick with this putter but the other putter I've got coming, I've got a Scotty Cameron Custom coming which I'm going to see if I like which I'm really excited about uh, but we'll look at that one when that comes. So at the moment it's Newport Free, so it's the Rory putter, never fills me with too much confidence. So basically it's the same putter as what I've got in shape but just in the Scotty Cameron face which does feel firmer which Tightly say helps you feel where you strike it on the face and to be honest with you I've said that for years actually I remember when soft faces first come I remember saying in a pro shop to the guys I work with surely that'll make you feel it less because it's like absorbing the hit which I kind of quite like obviously it's got the big line on it which I'm in and out of liking all silver finish and also it's got a super stroke grip on because they matched it to my master's grip but I'll be honest with you I'm just going to get something they sent me home with this one as well because they put that grip on before I had a chance to say that I want to try back to a thinner grip because I love my master's grip because it's the whole joke of I've been and other people haven't. Matt's got one and we kind of joke, not that he puts it on his club, I kind of wanted to. So if we play with people who haven't been, we kind of do a little wind up. But I'm kind of getting bored of the thicker grip. I quite like the idea of having a grip I used to putt with when I was younger, which was this kind of shape, the thinner shape, which again, I just think I'll feel it move and those kind of ideas a bit more. Still plenty of work needed in that department. But that's what I'm going for to start the year off until my custom comes. And you'll probably find me flicking between that one and this one, subject to how confidence goes. I think I am gonna change that grip out to the fitter one. Ah, Christmas is still there. I guess that's my job, is it, to put that up in the loft? We will get into these boxes before the day is out as well. Shall we do hybrids and fairway? Fairway then, 917 F2 in the fairway. Again, the weight port not really moved around, just standard. I'm in a D4 setting. So this is 15 degree loft, so it just gets my loft in the place I want it to be. I use my fairway from the ground, a bit from the tee, but I'd rather use my driver, but predominantly from the ground. Now when we went for the fitting, there was some lead tape. They put some lead tape on the back here because my three wood can go 240 through the air and then it can go 220 through the air and sometimes 210 because I get like a floaty one subject to strike. And then if I'm really gonna try and go for one, I can get this kind of low spin, like really low spin. Like from the deck, I was getting some at like 2.9 and 3,100 spin, like driver spin. And they're the knuckleballs that you'll see on the videos. And I actually quite like them. They were a bit scared by them. They didn't like the, the deviation between shortest to longest. But I like the fact that knuckleball was in there. So I've taken that off. Shah, Project X. It looks a bit fancy, doesn't it? Um, and obviously same grip. Power hybrid. My... AD, Tor AD, DI85 hybrid shaft. I am Jordan Spieth. If we get to film with Jordan this year, it could be very embarrassing for a grown man, couldn't it? Tight list H1. I prefer the H1 over the H2. I like the more hybrid shape, bit more on set, bigger head. This one again, it's a 19 degree, but in D1 setting, just to bring that loft down in line with what I had. Weight port set as neutral. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked these hybrids. They're nice. When I've tested them, you can watch reviews going back a couple of years. Easily put these in the bag. Obviously, same grip. Just like the shaft on this this one really, look at that. I am Jordan Spieth, people. And if Taylor made a watching, here's an interesting one, subject to you. Oh, look. <laughs> I've got your little statement here. 
Still got your little statement that you don't want to chat. Still don't want to chat today. I think I've upset them. Ping G25. Rinky Dinks is still in the house, people. I'm sure lots of you guessed this. This is Rinky Dinks. Don't know what shaft it is in it, but it's probably a stiff. It's a tall X flex, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's an X flex in that um, with a pin grip. There you go. Titleist don't want this in the bag. They want the other one in. And I will give it an honest try through the year. And if this one does let me down, I'll change. But for the moment, Rinky Dink survives. I'm proud that it's still in there. And to be honest with you, I'm happy that Titleist are happy to work on this club and work with me rather than just brutalise the bag completely. I mean, I mean it's pretty brutalised, isn't it, Titleist wise? But, you know, this is a pretty favourite club of mine. So there you go, Pink G23 is the remainder. So I think the kids are home. You might want to message uh, Taylor Maid and just let them know that I've still got a Pink G25. It makes that statement look a little silly, doesn't it? We're not at school today. Mm -hmm. Our school. Look at my nails. Amazing. Nails. Oh, lovely. Are they brown? Yes. Our yeah. school, little one. Yes. You know what's in these boxes for new? Apples. Lots of apples. Shall we unpack these boxes? The people often like this one. Oh, Jesus. So, golf ball. Going to be obviously a big change because of the face ball of last year with Chrome Soft. So, I'm tight. This Pro V1X, the ball I used. Well, for longer than I used um, Chrome Soft, if you think about it, but people often don't like to think about it. <laughs> they like to just comment. <laughs> You've never done that! Mm, I have. <laughs> but, it's fine. Yeah, Pro V1X. So, Pro V1X goes a little higher, I think, than Pro V. It's such a little difference, I find, in those two. Um, but I think it's a fraction higher, so why give that away? I didn't see a massive difference when I tested the two. Uh, I've got my number on the balls that I use for when I do reviews, which is, I'm a 26. 26. But that, I'm going to have to do something to that, bear with. So what I do is I take a red sharpie, and because they only, in their custom numbers, they go from 0, 0 to 99, I think. Now don't quote me on this, but I think you can get custom numbers as well, but maybe contact your local retailer. I just put a 2 at the end of it for 262. And to be honest with you, I should really. Oh, they've just fallen off. I might actually now put a hashtag on it. <laughs> So, and also, there are some face balls coming as well. So, find my Pro V1X will run this year. So, if you find a hashtag 262 no face ball on it, that's just one of the balls I've lost in general play or testing clubs, those kind of videos. If I hit one offline, which to be honest with you, I don't that much. But if you find one with my face on it, which we'll do a separate video on it, find my Pro V1X, which are all the balls I'm going to use as well, obviously, in the course vlogs that you watch. You go to the courses, you find those balls. There will be some amazing prizes from Titleist to win. Yes, please. In the other two boxes, is two massive boxes full of practice balls. So uh, I guess I better get practicing. Right, there you go. That is my Titleist bag of stuff. Minus one club. Me and the girls, girl one, girl two. Two are going, oh, having a party to get some food. Shall I take my tightest clubs with me, girls, no, just in case know. the people no. want to know what clubs are in my no. bag? No. We're no. Getting food. Um, Is that a no? I think that's a no. No. Um, random number. <laughs> um, See you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Post comments down below. Do you like my bag? Obviously, it's sponsored. This is a sponsored post, not sponsored post, but you know what I mean.